Kelly uh, has completed her honours in psychology at Edith Cowan University, uh, where she's graduated first class. Her research part of her honours dissertation, uh, which is being adapted for publication. Although this was the first research paper, Kelly had excellent support from Dr. Stephen Bright, who's from PRISM, Psychedelic Research and Medicine, and also AOD Media Watch, and also uh, Dr. A.L. Gringart, uh, who are co-adapting the paper for publication. Prior to studying, Kelly had a, uh, a career in the performing arts, which included performances at the Sydney Opera House, Sydney Theatre Company, Melbourne Theatre Company, and Griffin Theatre Company. So I would like to introduce uh, Kelly Pataniti. Kelly, welcome. Hi, thank you very much for having me. Uh, I'll just share my screen here. Uh, so as uh, Nick mentioned, I um, completed my honours in, in psychology at Edith Cowan um, at the end of last year. And so I'm going to present uh, this evening the findings from my research paper, from my dissertation, which we're adapting for publication, which uh, with um, lovely Dr. Stephen Bright and Dr. E.R. Gringart, who uh, were my supervisors at the time and, and now co-authors on the paper. And as you can see, the, the title of the paper is The Relationship Between Psychedelics, Mystical States, Personality and Pro-Environmental Behaviours. So it, it probably gives you a, a bit of an idea about what I'm going to uh, discuss uh, this evening. So there have been some really incredible changes observed in some people following a psychedelic experience, some of this which has already been discussed in, in previous webinars. I know you've had Dr Nigel Strauss and he talked about some of the therapeutic potential of, of psychedelics. Um, and, yeah, there's, there's been some promising therapeutic potential from, from recent research in psychedelics, in, including um, reduction in treatment-resistant depression, it was actually just a, a new study by um, Dr. Carhart Harris and his team um, that just came out last week, which which further supports this. Um, and for treating things like obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, anxiety in the terminally ill, and in treating substance dependence. So there's some real real promise there. And I was quite interested in the behavioural outcomes of a psychedelic uh, experience. But um, more specifically, this project kind of came about through some of my initial interactions with Dr. Steve Bright, who's who's quite involved in psychedelic research here in Australia. And he kind of got me into, uh, into reading quite, quite extensively on, on uh, what's known as a mystical experience or a mystical state, which can be brought about by taking psychedelic drugs. And just in an anecdotal sense, in some, circuits, um, some circumstances, people have made really dramatic changes to their lives and behaviour following a psychedelic occasioned mystical experience. So they're really quite a fascinating phenomenon. And my question was whether something like a mystical experience, which has shown to increase an individual's connectedness with nature, it can increase openness and positive attitudes, and whether this actually resulted in any tangible behaviour like pro-environmental behaviour. So um, I'm going to talk in a little bit more detail about these elements and introduce some of the existing research, and then I'll talk about our study and findings. So mystical experiences, which the idea might not be completely new to this, this audience, but um, they're considered really profound events that can significantly influence an individual's life. And mystical states can occur spontaneously or they can be occasioned through a variety of practices like meditation, uh, prayer, fasting, intense exercise. So there's, there's quite a deep history here of, of humans actively seeking out a mystical state. And there's a variety of reasons for why this could be and because there's, there's quite a, a multitude of positive after effects that have been associated with a, a mystical experience. Um, some of the more immediate effects include things like a blissful state and pleasurable body rushes, which have been compared to the sensation of ecstasy. So you can see why there's an appeal there. Um, but it's through substances like psychedelics that um, researchers have this element of reliability. It's thought that through a fairly, um, through a high dose of, of psychedelic administration, researchers are fairly reliably able to actually occasion these mystical states. And so they've been able to observe their side effects in, in controlled and in clinical settings. Um, so possibly the most exciting research on this, I think, was conducted by the prolific psychedelic researcher Roland Griffiths. And he administered psilocybin, so a, a psychedelic mushroom, to a group of psychedelic naive individuals. So uh, a group of people that had never taken psychedelic drugs before. And out of the 36 volunteers who were administered the psilocybin, 
22 reported mystical experiences. And just to give you a bit of, um, uh, you, you know, sense of, of, of how um, affecting these can be, 67% uh, uh, rated the experience as among the top five most meaningful experiences of their lives, comparing the event to the birth of a child or the death of a family member. 71% rated it as among the top five most spiritually significant experiences of their lives. And after two months, 79% of the participants who took the psilocybin reported significantly higher ratings of positive attitudes about life and the self, positive mood, positive social effects and behaviour. And so this was compared to baseline measures. Uh, and these ratings were actually corroborated by independent observations made by family and friends. Uh, and Griffiths actually did a follow-up study, so 14 months after he did that initial uh, psilocybin session, and they found that these ratings remained elevated and didn't differ significantly from ratings at two months, uh, which suggests that these changes have the potential to be quite enduring. So you can see how um, these changes in attitudes that are all very uh, positive could equate in positive behaviour changes like pro-environmental behaviour. So some other uh, after effects, I suppose, of, of a mystical experience and psychedelic experience is that uh, people have reported increases in their sense of connectedness or oneness with the world. People have also uh, reported an increase in nature relatedness. Um, and nature relatedness is an individual's degree of self-identification and intimate connectedness with nature. Another really fascinating uh, um, effect that has been reported following a mystical experience is, is increase, increases in the personality dimension of openness. Um, so I'm referring here to the, the widely used personality theory by Costa McRae, which is the uh, five-factor model of personality, which basically says that personality can be represented by, by five dimensions, which are openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. And openness is typically characterised by high levels of intellectual engagement, imagination, aesthetic pre appreciation, creativity and permeability to novel ideas. Uh, and so it's particularly interesting, this, this increase in openness following a mystical experience from, from um, our perspective, because openness is also frequently and very consistent, consistently associated with pro-environmental behaviour. So there's a, a commonality there. And uh, McLean et al. in 2011 actually combined the data from the two studies that I mentioned earlier by Griffiths um, with the, the high dose uh, psilocybin to the psychedelic naive individuals. And they found significant increases in levels of openness following the high dose uh, psilocybin session. But what is particularly interesting though, is that only the participants who reported a complete mystical experience had significantly higher levels of openness one year after the psilocybin session. So this finding implies that the quality or the type of psychedelic experience could be really important in contributing to the lasting subsequent effects on personality, and therefore it might have implications for their, their longer-term engagement in something like um, pro-environmental behaviour. Um, uh, just moving forward, I am going to refer to pro-environmental behaviour as PUB because it, it can become a bit of a, a tongue tie. Uh, so pro-environmental behaviour, PUB. Um, and there's results of other studies that I've listed there that also suggest that mystical experiences could be key in the longevity of the positive changes observed in individuals following um, a psychedelic experience. My question was, do these changes, which you know reportedly affect an, a person's relationship to the environment and their connectedness with nature and, and increases their levels of openness, does this result in any actual measurable uh, PEB, pro environmental behaviour? Uh, or is it just a notion? You know, do the, do people just feel this kind of connectedness with nature and attachment, but um, it doesn't actually go anywhere? It's 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 a um, it's a notion only. So, so what is uh, PEB? PEB uh, refers to uh, behaviour that an individual consciously seeks out and engages in to minimise the negative impact of their actions on the natural world. And uh, researchers also recognise that there are different types of PEB, which can vary depend on, um, depending on different social and moral contexts. So, for example, um, PEB like 
owning a small car or, or buying secondhand clothes might not correspond with the social rewards and individual beliefs they deserve. And I'm sure we can kind of recognise in ourselves and in other people these kind of discrepancies. So someone might um, be really strict and rigid, for example, with their recycling, but they might own and take pride in a, in a really big, big eight guzzling car or at home might be quite environmentally conscious but perhaps um, fly around the world regularly. So our, our pro-environmental behaviour can vary depending on what's socially accepted within uh, specific social circles. Uh, so there is one paper that has in fact looked at the relationship between classic psychedelics and PEB and this was done by Forsman and Sagliaolo in 2017. I hope I'm saying that surname correctly, I could be saying it wrong. Uh, but they did find that lifetime experience uh, with classic psychedelics predicted pro-environmental behaviour. Um, so this was a, it was a really great, exciting study, uh, but it did uh, there were some some things that, that uh, we thought that they didn't really explore that we wanted to look at further. So they didn't measure the quality of the experience. So they didn't include a measure of mystical states. And evidence suggests that the quality of a psychedelic experience might be more relevant for therapeutic outcome and for personal transformations than the frequency of psychedelic use. And I think, this, you know, just for sort of comparison, if you think about um, this is where the, the importance of context comes into it, I think, as well. So obviously someone who's taking a psychedelic at a rave versus someone on the edge of a beautiful mountain might have a very different experience or someone that is taking it every day might not experience anything profound and then someone can take it once in their life and have a really um, profound experience. So uh, frequency might not be the best measure of a psychedelic experience. Um, they also didn't explore the different uh, types of PEB. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, research suggests that individuals might be more inclined to participate in certain environmental behaviours over others. They also only measured two components of personality, which was openness and conscientiousness. And I mentioned earlier that um, I'm referring to the five-factor model, so there are five. Um, and we were curious to see how the other personality uh, variables related to mystical states and pro-environmental behaviour. Um, they also only had uh, PEB as a, a self-report measure only. So this is people's reports of what they believe they do environmentally. Uh, I'm not saying that people lie or anything, but, you know, this can be subject to bias. So um, we incorporate, uh, incorporated a charity task as a behavioural measure of PEB to accompany these self-report measures, which I'll, um, I'll talk about in a moment. So our aim was to extend Forsman and Sagliaolo's work by looking at the relationship between mystical experiences and PEB. And some of the analysis were, were exploratory because it's a fairly a new area, but we did make two predictions. So we hypothesised that those who achieved a mystical state would report higher PEB than those who did not. And we also uh, predicted that those who engaged in the charity task, so our behavioural measure, would have higher mystical experience scores and higher PB than those who did not. Um, and we also had a few other, uh, two other research aims uh, which are listed there. So um, we wanted to know whether people who report a psychedelic occasioned mystical experience were more likely engage, to engage in specific types of PB over others. And we wanted to explore the relationship between personality and mystical states and PEB. So we uh, developed an online survey uh, and it was an anonymous survey that we advertised to a variety of psychedelic groups because we wanted people specifically that had psychedelic experience and uh, we kind of globally looked for, for participants. Um, I think maybe even Nick would have um, put this out on, on social media as well, so you, you might have seen it. Um, but the survey consisted of five parts. Uh, the first is the first part was the charity task. So this was the behavioural measure of PEB. Uh, participants were asked to partake in a raffle for a one hundred dollar voucher, and they were asked in the event of winning whether they'd like to keep that voucher or donate the voucher to an environmental organisation. And those who selected yes to donate were considered to engage in charitable PEB, while those who selected to keep the voucher were were not. Um, we also got descriptive information about participant substance use. We measured personality 
And we also measured mystical states. And we use the a, a mystical, a mystical experience questionnaire for this, which has been used quite a lot by previous researchers and is thought to be a, a well-validated measure. And it consists of, of four factors of mystical states. And these are um, mystical, so how mystical the experience uh, is, uh, positive mood, transcendence of time and space, and ineffability. And uh, participants need to score, needed to score above or equal to 60% on all four of those factors to meet the criteria for a complete mystical state. Um, and we also had a uh, pro-environmental behaviour or PB scale. Uh, and for consistency, we used the same measure that um, Forsman and Saglialo, whose research we were extending, um, we, we used their same measure. Um, and the scale measures PEB overall, and it also consists of seven components or seven types of PEB, which are listed on that slide there. But these are waste reduction, eco shopping and eating, regular water and domestic energy conservation, one off domestic energy conservation actions, eco driving, political actions, and reducing car use and flight. So, after screening for multivariate outliers and incomplete surveys, we had a total of 240 participants, 157 were males, 75 were females, and eight were gender neutral participants. And they were aged between 18 and 67. So there's a bit of variety there uh, with an average age of 32. And magic mushrooms were the most commonly reported psychedelic drugs that participants used. Nearly three quarters had reported consuming magic mushrooms in the last year. This was followed by LSD, DMT, other, so they could spe specify a, a, an alternate psychedelic, ayahuasca and mescaline. And three quarters of the, the participants either held a university, university degree or had partial tertiary education. Over half the participants were either from Australia or the United States, and just under a quarter of the participants were from the UK. So results. Um, so this graph is just a, a visualization of the results. We have um, we've got mean scores here on the left, uh, the variables of interest on the bottom here. The sort of pink color here is basically those who, who didn't achieve a mystical state, and the green is, is those who did um, experience a mystical state. Um, and I've added a red dot just at the bottom there of the variables to signify that where the, the differences between the groups reached statistical significance. And the bars at the top there are confidence intervals. And you might notice that I've just got three personality variables there, agreeableness, conscientiousness, and uh, openness. Uh, but they were, So they were the only variables that correlated significantly with PEB. So for the type of analysis that we use, which was a multivariate analysis of variance, um, there was no need to include those other variables. They didn't meet the criteria to go any further there. So 134 participants met the criteria for a complete mystical state and 106 did not. And those who achieved a mystical state did score higher on PEB than those who did not. And this was a statistically significant uh, difference. So that supported the, the first hypothesis. Um, so those who had previously achieved a mystical state during a psychedelic experience did report higher PEB than those who did not. And when we went deeper here, it turns out that those who achieved a mystical state scored significantly higher on two PEB types eco-shopping and eating, and one-off domestic conservation actions. So one-off domestic conservation actions involve um, isolated behaviour aimed at conserving energy, like purchasing an, an energy-efficient uh, appliance, for example. Um, eco-shopping and eating is, is more about the daily ethical considerations around your consumerism, like purchasing sustainable products and adopting a vegetarian diet, for example. So both of those facets are primarily day-to-day -day actions which function at an individual rather than a global level. And so while mystical experiences have shown to increase individuals' connectedness with the world and nature, which really has these kind of global connotations, there are additional factors that might influence whether an individual is able to engage in PEB at, this, at that global level. And when, I, when I'm saying global level, I'm talking about sort of higher order environmental actions. So for example, writing to an MP to encourage policy change, uh, rallying a protest. Um, so to engage in those kind of actions, there are other factors that, that an individual might need, like um, sense of control, availability of resources and education. Um, whereas day-to-day -day actions, uh, there's kind of uh, quick 
and uh, immediate and effective ways that someone can um, reduce their environmental impact. So it's possible that through personal transformations, uh, attention is drawn towards the accessible and immediate life practices that might enhance environmental sustainability, like switching to a plant-based diet, because it's that kind of immediate effect that, that you feel that you're making and, and you are making. Um, but additional research is, is recommended to explore this relationship further. Those who met the criteria for a complete mystical state also scored significantly higher on openness, which is consistent with previous research, and on agreeableness, which is a finding less frequently reported in psychedelic literature. And there were no significant differences um, observed between conscientiousness for the mystical experience groups. Uh, in relation to personality and uh, pro-environmental behaviour, so Overall, the correlations uh, were quite low, but there were some interesting relationships that um, I think is worth noting. Uh, so there, as you can see here, um, both, both openness and conscientiousness are significantly correlated with PEB overall, but they also correlated with a real variety of pro-environmental types. So you can see openness correlated with waste reduction, eco-shopping and eating, uh, et cetera, and so, so four types there, four out of seven, and same with conscientiousness. And this really supports the robustness and consistency of association observed in the PEB literature because it's a, it's a very frequent finding that openness and conscientiousness are related to, to pro-environmental behaviour. And one of the reasons, uh, it, it could be that one of the reasons PEB is so consistently related to those personality dimensions is because um, they happen to be correlated to so many variety of types of PEB. So I thought that was quite interesting. Extroversion, on the other hand, um, demonstrated negligible correlation with the overall PEB score, yet it did significantly and positively correlate with the PEB types, one-off domestic conservation actions and political actions. So characteristics of extroversion like assertiveness, uh, confidence and social seeking might only lend themselves to certain uh, PEB types over others, perhaps those that are more social in nature. Agreeableness uh, significantly correlated with PEB scores overall, but only significantly correlated with one PEB type, which was eco-shopping and eating. So those high in, in agreeableness uh, might be both sympathetic towards something like animal cruelty, but there might also be an element of conforming with popular social and cultural norms like becoming a vegetarian, which has become a lot more popular in the past de decade. Those high in agreeableness also might be less drawn to other PEB types like political action as, as they might require more confrontational characteristics. In relation to uh, mystical states, although it wasn't significant, uh, neuroticism was actually negatively associated with mystical experience scores, which kind of suggests that characteristic of neuroticism such as insecurity and anxiety might actually inhibit an individual from experiencing an altered state of consciousness, which is congruent with, with previous psychedelic literature as well. Uh, similarly, extroversion and conscientiousness demonstrated almost no relationship with mystical experience scores, suggesting that characteristics of, of both those dimensions might not be necessary or conducive for experiencing a mystical state. And the charity task, so our behavioural measure of PEB. So a total of 92 participants chose to donate the voucher, while 148 participants chose to keep the voucher. And there was no statistically significant differences observed in this task between those who achieved a mystical state compared to those who did not. So mystical experiences had no effect on whether someone would choose to donate the voucher or not in this instance. Um, there was, however, a significant uh, difference observed in um, self-reported PEB scores between those who donated to charity and those who did not. So those who donated to charity did have higher self-reported uh, PEB scores than those who didn't donate to charity. So the task did appear to be measuring what we wanted it me to measure because there was a congruency there. So I guess the question is, why didn't we see a significant difference on the charity task between those who experienced a mystical state and those who did not, considering that we, we did see differences on self-reported PEB? And there are a number of possible explanations. Um, firstly, the survey was advertised with the incentive to win a $100 voucher. And for some people, this could have just been the primary motive for, for completing the survey. Um, not to mention certain socioeconomic factors, which we didn't measure. Um, 
And so regardless of their experiences or environmental values, their likelihood of donating might, may have been reduced. Um, it's also possible that the, tar the task wasn't um, representative enough of PEB, but just perhaps was one uh, represented one facet of pro-environmental behaviour. So individuals may be financially motivated to keep the voucher, but they might have made they might make really other considered PEB uh, choices throughout their lives. Third, due to the cross-sectional uh, study design, we, we can't determine whether a participant's mystical experience influenced PEB relative to their pre-existing attitudes and behaviours. So people could have had a below average score on self-reported PEB, but this still could have been significantly higher than the rating might have been before their psychedelic experience. Finally, those who didn't meet the criteria for a complete mystical state may have been pro-environmentally inclined regardless of their psychedelic experience, which is, is somewhat plausible given that we did have significant differences observed in um, PEB scores as a function of the charity donation groups. So some limitations. Uh, online surveys are wonderful. They possess, have an array of advantages like convenience for participants, absence of interviewer bias, flexibility and anon anonymity for participants, which I know is very valued in as, particularly in psychedelic research. Um, but they also have limitations. And just to name a few, these can include self-selection bias, distorted responses and technical issues. Um, additionally, our study relied primarily on self-report measures, which can be biased to uh, um, inaccuracy. Um, the charity task we did have as a behavioural measure to kind of mitigate these limitations for PEB measures, yet um, an online sample restricted the assessment of all the other constructs to self-report measures. We also had a bit of a gender imbalance. 65.42% uh, were male, 31.25% were female, and 3.27% were non-binary. Um, and having more males than females is um, actually quite a common imbalance among survey-based psychedelic research. And generally, statistical correction uh, methods so sort of deal with that. But more specifically, um, the small amount of non-binary participants meant that they couldn't be proportionally represented in this study. And the Australian Bureau of Statistics uh, estimates the, the prevalence of non-binary individuals in Australia to um, be approximately 17%. So you can see that, that, that pop this population wasn't proportionally represented in our study. And finally, finally, the societal context and historical timing, or AKA COVID. Um, this questionnaire was, was distributed amidst the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, although I feel nervous to say the height because who knows. Um, but a lot of the world was and is still under various conditions of lockdown. So some of those PEB items were irrelevant. So questions about flying, even public transport, traveling, things like that. So some of them could have been irrelevant depending on where the, the, the participant lived, so their geographic location. And this might have influenced the ability of individuals to, to engage in or accurately recall their PEB, which could affect the accuracy of their self-reporting. So in summary, our findings support and extend previous research. Our findings also indicate that the quality of a person's psychedelic experience is important for whether they engage in PEB. Uh, those who experience a mystical state may gravitate towards certain BB types over others. And our start of study further validates the relationship between mystical states and the personality trait of openness while observing some interesting preliminary relationships between personality and PEB. As greater digitalization and urbanization alienates individuals from nature, strengthening the connection uh, between humans and nature should be a priority if pro-environmental behaviors are to be enhanced. So with this in mind, we recommend that these, ex these findings are explored further, ideally using an experimental design. So many of the limitations that I outlined earlier could be really minimized using an experimental longitudinal research design. So if researchers could control for various factors like psychedelic dosage, context and baseline measures of personality and pro-environmental behaviour, then they could potentially uncover causal relationships. And if causal relationships are found, then it would suggest that certain profound experiences can alter people's views and behaviours towards the environment in positive, tangible and enduring ways. Uh, thank you. And, and here, are, here are my references here. And if anyone wants a copy of those, I'm, I'm happy to, to put them in a chat or, or anything uh, like that. Uh, so 
thanks for tuning in to to the lecture. I think we're going to take a, a couple, maybe three minute break and come back for a Q&A if that's correct, Nick. The question was, um, do you think that uh, mystical states are the causative factor in positive change from the psychedelic experience or are they just something that happens alongside? Are they just correlative? Um, Big question. Um, and, of course, the study that we conducted uh, can't can't provide any clear answers on that. It wasn't a causal study. Um, and I think this comes up quite a lot, and especially with, with environmentalism as well. Uh, are people who take psychedelics already drawn to, to environmental pursuits, you know? Um, and, yeah, it's, it's a very big question. Um, and there's that thing as well of, of a lot of psychedelic users who, who gravitate towards natural environments to, to enhance their psychedelic experience. Um, I think some of the closest research, though, that actually does approach some of this causality uh, stuff does come from from Griffiths, the research that I they spoke about e earlier, because he did use a group of people who had never taken psychedelics before. So, um, so and he measured baseline measures, uh, and then you know, and a year, fourteen month follow up, and those ratings of positive attitudes and and behaviour did improve um, and didn't differ significantly. So I think. Uh, you know, I'm hesitant to say anything is causal, but um, he really sort of demonstrated that that there was um, a measurable increase in, in these behaviours. But then the other argument you could come back with is like, well, who, who are the people that are that are signing up for research on psychedelics? Maybe they hadn't taken them before, but they had always had a curiosity, and perhaps they, you know, these are the same kind of 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 people. So it's a really difficult question and one that I'd, I'd love to do a study on and, and explore further. Sorry, what was the beginning of that question? It was, um, just repeat it, sorry. The implications are for psychedelic medicines if people uh, with a high level of neuroticism are less likely to have mystical experiences. Um, so do you think there are some implications um, in those that have that high level of neuroticism? Do you have to have a certain, uh, you know, standing mindset already for these things to work in, in a positive way? Yeah. This is a really interesting question, and I know that um, there have been some studies that actually do screen people with high neuroticism as not being um, eligible for the study, for example, or you know not a prime candidate. So I do think it's something researchers are already aware of, um, and th there is some research where those um, high neuroticism had had a higher were higher likelihood of having a challenging psychedelic experience, and not saying that all challenging psychedelic experiences are negative, but uh, they can certainly be unpleasant. So um, there, there is there is implications there. I do I do think that perhaps you know those high neuroticism it, it might not be as an idea you know to take a high dose of a psychedelic it might not be as I um, it might not be ideal, but I, I suppose that might be for the individual to decide. Uh, a question here um, from the Unrest Cure. Um, I'm not sure if this did come up in the presentation directly, but uh, the Unrest Cure asking uh, if um, the relationship between different compounds and mystical experiences, was that looked at in your study? And did you find uh, that certain compounds were more likely to result in a mystical experience than others? That's um, actually a really, really interesting question. And since we did gather descriptive information on on what, which psychedelic they took, uh, we could actually conduct uh, uh, um, an analysis there on on whether they were more likely to. We actually haven't done that though. So maybe when I finish this, I'll be crunching some of that data and, and having a look myself because that's a really, really good question. <laughs> 